Welcome back to Breakfast from Bahrain. My name is Bob Babbitt. We are brought to you by Babbittville Radio. Our next guest, yeah, she's a really, really good triathlete. She's won the Laguna Challenge, Laguna Paquette four times, two times, 70.3 world champion. But Melissa Halshut is also a steeplechaser, which is way more important than this triathlon <laughs> stuff. Mel, how you doing? Yeah, I'm really good. Yeah, it's really good to be here. It's quite different, but um, yeah. yeah, it's good. And it's probably good to be healthy. And we saw you in Kona, and we were talking about, you know, you're like, well, I really don't want to come on. I really don't think I should do the interview because I, I basically can't race. And that was, this was the year for you, right? That Ironman, the, the winning the world champ, or going to the world championship, that was a goal. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty disappointing. Um, obviously, 70.3 Worlds was my major goal this year. And, yeah. and then really to have a good shot at Kona to check it all out for next year and, you know, both of them got just taken away from me. So, yeah, it's, it's good to be back racing, and it's good that I got to do a couple of races at the end of the season. And it was one of those rare massage injuries that you had. Yeah, very rare. I don't think it'll ever happen again. <laughs> um, yeah, nobody could have predicted that. Um, I guess yeah. it was just a freak accident, and I was just really unlucky. And it's one of those things that when, when it happens, you're probably thinking, okay, well, so it'll, it'll go away. But how long was it, did it take before you finally felt like yourself again? Seven weeks I was out of the water. Oh, my God. Um, so, yeah, I could start running after a few weeks, running and riding, just easily, though, because the rib just kept popping in and out until it was, I guess, everything had healed and yeah. was holding it in place. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was quite a bit of time out, and, um, yeah, there's nothing I could do about it. So when you look back to your steeplechase career, which of course is something we always love to talk about, the best time for, for 3,000 steeple was what? Um, 9.28 I did. So 9 minutes, 28 seconds for steeple, and now you're doing events that are basically 9 hours. <laughs> How do you go from going, okay, I'm uh, I, I steeplechase, I'm, I'm really, really good at this, now I'm going to go and jump into something that's basically 9 hours? Yeah, it, w it was a completely different feeling. When I did my first half Ironman, it was, it was basically my first triathlon. I did an Olympic distance the week before just to get a bit of a feel for putting yeah. it together. And um, yeah, I got to the run and 21K, that's, that's, I'd never even run 21K in yeah. my life. Like my long run was maybe 19, 20K at a really slow pace. Right. And um, the hardest thing was actually going slow enough at the start. Because <laughs> you, you just went out like you were running a steeple. Yeah, well, I'm used to running three minutes a K. And, yeah, yeah um, Jared, my husband, just said, just do not do that. You'll you get to 5K and you're going you're gonna to blow. So the first thing was I was just watching my watch the whole time and yeah. just making sure, you know, I didn't go any faster than, like, 345, which at that time felt like a walk in the park. And that's the probably couple of Ks didn't, though. Yeah. <laughs> that's probably the toughest part for someone with that type of speed is trying to keep yourself under control and also the patience that's a long day yeah yeah it's mentally exhausting um yeah. whereas with track running 3k you know just over nine minutes you're out right. there it's mental aspect doesn't really come into it <laughs> maybe the last hundred meters yeah. that's about it we we're talking to luke bell and he said that uh challenge laguna Paquette is by far the toughest bike course he's ever been on in his life and you've won that race four times. What is it about you and that bike course? Because I hear there's like 20% grades out there, and there's a lot. It can be slippery out there. It's a pretty tough course. Yeah, it is. Um, I actually prefer the hills. I, I, it breaks it up. Um, yeah, it's really hard going up, 22% up. Um, <laughs> so you got to make sure you've got the right cluster for starters. Yeah. But, um, but then you get a bit of a rest, and it's, it's also really technical as well. And there's dogs, cats, chickens, everything. So it's, it's kind of more fun. It doesn't actually feel like you're racing out there. It's more just survival. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's almost like an adventure type race. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so when when you look back at your steeple career, what was your what was your best steeple? What was your best race? Uh, Goodwill Games, um, I won. So yes. that's that was one of the best. And I was still in school then. So um, you know. I'd, beaten the world as a, as a school kid yeah. so that was pretty amazing but Commonwealth Games is probably the best it's just more highly ranked I guess and exactly yeah. and where was that Commonwealth Games held Melbourne so that, oh. that made it even better <laughs> <laughs> what a great experience doing that in your home country yeah it was amazing it was I remember my coach just saying just don't take the lead because there was this really good Ugandan girl and he said just sit on her and then just wait for the kick at the end yeah. and we'd really been working on the kick and 
I was edging up and as soon as I had just one foot in front, the crowd would just roar like crazy because I was the Australian. Right. And I was just like, you just want to go to the front. Yes. But yeah, it was pretty amazing. <laughs> So the, the transition from, it sounds like the transition was fairly, okay, I'm going to get in the triathlon, do an Olympic distance, do a 70.3, and then off you go. Were there, were there points in the triathlon uh, where, where you were thinking, gosh, well, why did I leave steeplechase? Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> um, my first half Ironman, I was about five minutes um, behind out of the water. I think I was dead last, out of the water. Easy to find your bike? Yeah, easy to find my bike. <laughs> the only road bike there as well. <laughs> oh, was it a road bike? You didn't even have a tri bike, right? I no, I didn't have a bike. I I'd bought myself just a cheap road bike, um, and then two weeks before the race, I snapped it in half. So I was actually on a borrowed road bike that was two sizes too big. I had clip-on aero bars that were borrowed. I had a borrowed wetsuit off a male that was way too big. So yeah, the whole, the whole thing was quite different. But, um, yeah, no, after the race, I, I crossed the line and everyone was, like, grabbing me, pulling me from everywhere, just going, when's the next race? And I went, are you serious? I am not doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> but before you knew it, you were doing it. And when did you feel like you could be successful in this sport and, you know, potentially to make a living at it? Well, after the first one, winning my first half Ironman in, yeah. in a pretty decent time, I, I thought I, I can make a career so out of wait, this. Wait, wait, wait. You won that first half Ironman. You did the Olympic the year, week before, and then on all this borrowed stuff, you won the race. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, so, like, we don't like those underachievers. Nice. <laughs> no, I, I was kind of in two minds thinking, why did I have to win the race? Because now people are expecting me to do it again. <laughs> and, yeah, and win every time. And, yeah, and they were all asking me when the next race was, and I said to Jared, I'm like, Maybe I can still make it as a runner. <laughs> when, when's the next this. Commonwealth Games? <laughs> yeah, so, um, so after that, I was still kind of in two minds. I, I wanted to be a runner, but I knew I just kept getting injured in, in yeah. running, so I just kept riding my bike, and I was swimming a little bit. And um, Then I signed up for Phuket, and that, that I, was it. I remember standing on the start line going, I can't believe I'm doing this again. But, yeah, just running down, you know, the finish line, and you just, it was just an amazing feeling. And, and you win that? No, I got second actually oh. then to Caroline. Okay. Yes, it was the Asia Pacific Champs. So that was a pretty big deal, yeah. but um, but yeah, it's second at such a big race. I, I thought you know maybe I can give this a go. Maybe it's not too bad. <laughs> and is that when sponsors sort of found you? Um, actually, my manager after the Gold Coast Half Ironman, my first race, he put a bet on with a bike sponsor because I didn't have a bike. Yes, I had to give this bike back that I was on. Um, he actually said, if she wins the race, will you give her a bike? And they're like, yeah, and first time out, yeah. Yeah, they're like, has she done anything? Has she ever raced a triathlon? No, no. So they said, yeah, yeah, sure. And so that was my first bike sponsor, Avanti. On a bet? <laughs> yeah, on a bet. I got two bikes out of it. <laughs> I love that. That is really great. <laughs> so when you look at this race, and this seems like a, a good race for you, even though it's not hilly, it's sort of fun. You ride on the Formula One track. It's, uh, you know, it's... Um, it, it takes mental perseverance because you're, it's for sure going to be windy out there, right? And you run and there's animals going to be chasing you at some point <laughs> on the run. I've heard a lot about the ostriches. <laughs> exactly. So what, when you look at this course and you got to ride on the Formula One track this morning, talk a little about the course and if you feel it suits you. I'd prefer some hills, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's really windy. I've been here for a couple of days now and I think that wind will really help me. Um, hopefully it's a headwind. Yes. Um, I've heard most of it's going to be a tail but yeah. um but yeah hopefully that picks up that will help me and also this is a 20 meter drop that's line. good for you right yeah that's really good that's really good so hopefully i can not come out too far behind in the water but at least you know those front girls can't work together now i don't think you could get any benefit from 20 meters you can hardly even see the person in front right so yeah i think that will really play into my hands nicely um i haven't got out to see the run course yet so i'm hoping to do that this afternoon so yeah when you look at the field here which is you know, just jam-packed full of 5150 athletes and 70.3 uh, half half distance people and long distance. Uh, do you think about the other athletes, or you just worry about you? Mainly, I just worry about me. But um, I will have a look through to to kind of see who I need to chase down and right. um, yeah. So I'll, I'll go through the field just before I race. But yeah, usually I just concentrate on my own race, and I guess it's. It's easy in a way for me because I come out behind in the swim. I just got to put my head down and you just got to go. go. For it. There's not a lot of strategy. The strategy yeah. is go hard. Yeah, it's not really tactical for me. Whereas the others, you know, they might need to put a gap into me here yeah. and you know get away. But yeah, 
<laughs> with a race like this, I mean, a lot of the races you do when there's not a really deep field, you're, you know, you're running through, you're trying to catch four or five people here. There could be a few more than that up the road. And I bet you get a little energy from every person you catch. Yeah, yeah, it is good. Um, yeah, I, I kind of like the way I, I race with my weakest leg first and I get, get to keep catching people and I can see them up ahead. So, yeah. you know, that motivates you. I, I just couldn't imagine running scared the whole time, having the, the swim your strongest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Always going, oh, my God, I hope I can <laughs> hope hold they on. Come and hope they're not coming, yeah. And you get to see them where the, when you're leading, you really have no idea who's coming and when they're coming. Yeah, yeah. So they don't know when I'm coming either. So, you know, usually you just sneak up behind them and then put on a bit of a surge and, and yeah, hopefully you're out of sight then and they're, they're just looking over their shoulder. <laughs> so when your steeplechase coach sees what you're doing now, uh, I don't know if he or she, but does your coach look and go, I can't believe what you've done or they go, I, I knew it all the time? Uh, my coach, I think um, just after I won my first world champs, he said, you know, there's still a spot on the team for you at the Olympics. And <laughs> meaning in running, yes. and I went. There's no way. There's no way I'm going back. It's it's totally different. I just I love with this racing that I can I can go wherever I want. I can Travel I can pick my own races. I I don't have to report back to anyone. Right. Um, it was just it was really stressful with running. You you got to stay with the team, travel with the team. You got to do the races they say, and it's just so political. And and here I'm just doing it for me. So I love that about it. And you love it. Yeah, definitely. Good. And the plan for next year is to sort of do what you were planning to do this year in 70.3 in Kona? Yeah, pretty much. I didn't get my, um, my run at Kona this year, so I went to check it out instead. So, um, so next year is, is the one that I want to be on the start line trying to win it. So. Was that, had you been to Kona to see that race before? I did go in 2012, okay. um, Jared race though, so I was too busy watching him. Um, it was his third ever triathlon. Right. He started with an Ironman and, and then did Kona. So, oh yeah, I was too busy watching him, running around watching him. So I didn't really get to see the, the girls in right. the race. And so this year it was, it was really good to just see it all unfold, being right there. It makes a difference. I remember Welchie in, in 93 watching because he was injured and he came back the following year and won. He just got a sense of what was going on up front. Do you feel you came away with some knowledge of what, how the women's race plays out? Yeah, it was amazing watching it. Like you, you watch on TV and you just think these guys are superhuman. They're they're not even hurting. They're they're only hurting. You know, the last right. couple of k on the run. But just watching the start of the run, everyone gets off the bike buggered. So it just yeah, hosed, right? it just really reinforces that it's just a mental race. Like everyone's as fit as each other. Um, so yeah, it just comes down to the mental aspect. So. Yeah. And the women's field now is so deep. We were just, and then this goes to all the this type of race or Tacona, that you can't really have a bad spell. It used to be that the fields weren't that deep, especially on the women's side, where you could, you know, you could be fourth, fifth off the. You, could, you now you could be fifteenth, twentieth back. Someone yeah. like Mary Beth was right where she wanted to be after the swim and the bike, and you know, instead of running three. She ran 3.20. If she runs 3.10, all of a sudden she's, you know, top five. So it's the field yeah. has gotten, just in your time in the sport, the women's field seems like it's gotten a lot deeper. Yeah, definitely. Um, like you say, you can have a good swim and bike, but you can lose so much time on the run. And yeah. I guess you've you got to keep riding hard, but you've got to be thinking about that marathon as well. And I, I think that showed this year with Rini running, running everybody down, being four minute, 14 minutes down. Yeah. Like, that's huge. And she must be so mentally strong to actually keep pushing on like you would think right. okay it's it's not mine today but yeah anything can happen so with someone like Rini talking about well I'm in off-season form and I'm not really here to race that fast you believe that for a second <laughs> um I, yeah I, I I I think yeah she's probably I I know after winning the 70.3 worlds it's it's really hard to pull yourself back to race again exactly. and yeah, you can relate to that yeah. you know you you put everything into this one race and after it's it's not so much physically you need a break but mentally you do so yeah I think mentally she's she's switched off but I think also that might help her there's there's no pressure on her here she's she's Nothing, done all right. her goals this year she's here just to have fun and right. sometimes that works in your favor so for you because you didn't have the end of the season you wanted and you're you're here does that, does that put more pressure on you, or do you feel that, hey, this is, I'm just happy to be healthy and happy to be able to race? Yeah, I, I guess it puts more pressure on me because I feel like, what have I done this year? Like, I, I want something else now. Something um, tangible. I want, a, I want a, a great result. Yeah, yeah. And I guess it makes me more hungrier, but 
yeah, I guess it puts more pressure on you. <laughs> love it. Well, listen, congrats on everything you've done. I love it. You've gone from a nine-minute event to a nine-hour event seamlessly. <laughs> it's, it's great. Have, have a lot of fun out there, and watch out. Those leopards are really fast. Leopards. All right. Make me run faster. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa Hoshul, this has been our guest again. This is Breakfast from Bahrain. My name is Bob Abbott. We are brought to you by Babbittville Radio. You can check us out on iTunes. Hold on, everyone. We will be right back. Now we are... حبيب وعني